Hello everyone and welcome to Edu Search Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to continue our discussion on applied anatomy of pancreas. We have already seen the back to basics part where we have seen imaging based segmentation or parts of pancreas as well as the embryology of pancreas and the congenital issues that can happen during the development of the pancreas. Now we are going to look at the blood supply of the pancreas and for everyone who is going to study pancreas or operate on pancreas or give exams where these questions are asked, this is a very important topic. So please understand all the concepts that we are discussing. We are going to give it time. We are going to discuss the arteries and in the next part we are going to discuss the veins. You may think that this is a small topic, but understand that this contains a lot of questions, a lot of confusion arises in this area. So we are going to discuss it and simplify it in a very simple manner. So this is a diagram that a lot of you would have seen. We are looking at the celiac axis that is arises from the abdominal aorta. We have a video on abdominal aorta as well as the branches of aorta. You can have a look at it. There is a separate video on blood supply to the liver where also we have discussed this anatomy. We know that celiac axis gives three major branches, the common hepatic artery, the splenic artery and the left gastric artery. In this video, the important is the branch which is the gastroduodenal artery which is usually a part of the common hepatic artery. As we all know, after giving rise to gastroduodenal artery, the common hepatic artery then continues as the proper hepatic artery and that gives rise to the right and left hepatic artery. So for this video, you have to understand that the branch of celiac axis that is splenic artery is important because it supplies a lot of branches to the pancreas as we will see and the gastroduodenal artery which gives rise to a lot of branches to the pancreas. So this is a very simple schematic diagram. Put this in your mind and this will help you in answering a lot of questions in your exam. Understand that the lines in purple are arcades which are always present. The line in blues are commonly asked questions. To explain this diagram, this red is the abdominal aorta, the origin of celiac axis and the origin of superior mesenteric. Artery. Like I said, we have videos on anatomy of the arteries. So if you don't understand the schematic, go into those videos in the playlist and understand the concepts of branches of abdominal aorta. So as we have already seen, celiac axis gives rise to common hepatic artery, splenic artery and left gastric artery. In this video, we want to understand the GDA, that is the gastroduodenal artery, which arises usually from the common hepatic artery. Remember that there are a lot of variations in this area when it comes to arterial as well as venous drainage as well as the bile duct anatomy. So the gastroduodenal artery gives rise to right gastroepiploic artery and then also gives rise to superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. Remember the name SPD, superior pancreatico duodenal artery. The name is because it supplies blood to both the duodenum, the second and the third part of duodenum as well as the head of the pancreas as well as a part of uncinate of the pancreas. So common hepatic artery gives rise to gastroduodenal artery, gives rise to superior pancreatico duodenal artery which divides into two, the anterior and the posterior SPD artery. So you will get confused by these names, but if you understand that there is a superior branch from the gastroduodenal artery, which divides into anterior and posterior, and both of them supply the pancreaticoduodenal area. Okay, so anterior superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. So this is one part of arcade that supplies the pancreas. Going to splenic artery, which also gives rise to some important branches. But in this diagram, we are showing one of the most important branches of splenic arteries that supplies blood to a lot of the body and neck of the pancreas, which is the dorsal pancreatic artery. 
Now dorsal pancreatic artery again goes from up to down and we will see this in relation to pancreas in the next slide. There is also a schematic that we are going to discuss. But in this slide, we are just trying to give you the various connections that are there in this area, right? So dorsal pancreatic artery has a left branch as well as a right branch and these are transverse branches. The left transverse branch goes towards the tail of the pancreas where it will join the great pancreatic artery, whereas the right transverse branch usually joins the ASPDA, okay, or the PSPDA. So you have to understand that the right transverse branch can join the anterior superior pancreatic artery, and this is known as the Kirk's peripancreatic arcade. In some books, it is mentioned that the right transverse branch can also join the posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery, right? But when we talk of Kirk's arcade, the actual description was that the dorsal pancreatic artery gives a right-sided branch, a branch towards the head of pancreas, where it joins the anterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery. So, Kirk's pre-pancreatic arcade is pre-pancreatic, that is anterior to pancreas, and so it has to join the ASPDA. Some anatomical books also describe it as joining the PSPDA, right? So, that is one important question that is asked, Kirk's arcade. Splenic artery also gives rise to left gastroepiploic artery and the arcade between the right gastroepiploic artery and the left gastroepiploic artery is known as the arc of Barco. Again, a very commonly asked question. So, what is arc of Barco? It is basically a communication arterial anastomosis between right gastroepiploic artery and the left gastroepiploic artery. Now, coming to the superior mesenteric artery and a direct communication between celiac axis and superior mesenteric artery forms the arc of Bueller. Again, a commonly asked question. So, if you remember just this slide of this entire video, at least 10 to 15 questions in your exams can come from this slide. That is the importance of this line diagram a diagram that has been created after a lot of studies. Articles have been published by our team on the arterial supply of this area and that is why these line diagrams can be simplified for your understanding. So now coming to superior mesenteric artery, the constant branch from superior mesenteric artery towards the right or basically towards the uncinate is the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. So, we saw the SPDA that is superior pancreatic duodenal artery. Now, we are seeing the IPDA which is the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. Again, it divides into two parts, anterior and posterior inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. The posterior will join with the posterior and anterior will join with the anterior as you can C and these will form arcades that supply the pancreatic duodenal area. The trunk you can see here the common hepatic artery gives rise to the gastroduodenal artery. We have already seen it divides into two branches the anterior and the posterior. This one is the posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery. They go in the pancreatic duodenal group. And from the superior mesenteric artery is the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery, which again divides into anterior and posterior inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. And these are the two arcades, right? So, this is the thing that we saw in the schematic. Another important thing we saw in the schematic, this is the splenic artery, which runs along the superior border of the pancreas, usually behind it. And splenic artery, the first branch that splenic artery gives towards pancreas is the dorsal pancreatic artery is given close to the origin of splenic artery, close to the neck of the pancreas. The dorsal pancreatic artery, we already saw, it divides into a left transverse branch and the right transverse branch. The right transverse branch will join the anterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery and form the Kirk's arcade. 
whereas the left transverse branch becomes the inferior pancreatic artery or the transverse pancreatic artery. Now, this branch joins the great pancreatic artery or the arteria pancreatica magna. Magna is great basically. So, again, a branch of splenic artery that is great pancreatic artery or arteria pancreatica magna which joins with the inferior pancreatic artery or the transverse pancreatic artery and continues to go towards the tail of pancreas well it joins the caudal artery of pancreas again a branch of splenic artery so remember that there are three parallel vertically downward branches from the splenic artery that you can see in this area one is dorsal pancreatic artery which is closer to the neck gives rise to the transverse or the inferior pancreatic artery which joins or anastomosis with the Great pancreatic artery or arteria pancreatica magna, both of them combine and provide blood supply towards the tail of pancreas where they join the caudal artery of pancreas, which is again a branch of splenic artery. So after understanding this entire concept, if you notice in the previous slide or you can see in this slide, the only branch that provides a communication or an anastomosis between the blood supply of the right pancreas, as we saw in our segmental anatomy of pancreas, the right pancreas versus the left pancreas, the only artery that crosses this area is the dorsal pancreatic artery. And if this artery is divided, then there is no way that the blood supply of the two parts intermingle. So that is why this area becomes the watershed area of the pancreas. That is the area between the right pancreas and left pancreas where you will find the only communicating vessel being the right transverse branch of the dorsal pancreatic artery. So that is how the arterial anatomy in this area can be described. It's a very important topic Please go through this video two, three times, understand the various branches, the names. It is difficult to see and understand in one time, but when you revise it again and again, you will see that it becomes easier if you understand these graphics and put them in your mind in 3D orientation, right? So in the next part of this video, we will look at the veins in similar fashion. We will look at some important variations in the venous anatomy in this area. We will also highlight some questions that are commonly asked irrelevant to blood supply of the pancreas. Thank you.